This video was brought to you in part by the supporters of the AMTV Patreon. Thank you. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and welcome to this rather special video. We're going to be taking a look today at my Doctor Who books. I know some of you have probably seen these in the background, I've had a lot of questions, people saying, oh, we want to see what books you've got. So I thought, well, let's uh, delve into the shelf. So our first book today is a, a book simply titled as Doctor Who. Uh, it's written by Mark Campbell. This is the Pocket Essential Doctor Who, and it's got a bunch of Doctor Who buzzwords on the front. Uh, this is basically a little pocket guide to every episode that came out so far, and each of them has like a gist and observations, and Mark Campbell himself gives each of them a score. And I actually read this quite a lot as a kid. There's no pictures or nothing, but um, you get pretty, you get a decent amount of detail. I've heard there are some inaccuracies. So look at this. This is the uh, Myth Makers. It tells you how many episodes there are, the name of them for those that have it. You got the cast, the crew, the broadcast, the the gist, so the TARDIS lands in ancient Greece during the Trojan War. Observations and a verdict. So he gives the Mythmakers 7 out of 10. Very nice. So yeah, I used this a lot. Uh, I got it in 2005 when it came out. And again, the internet, it was around, but I wasn't using it much as a nine-year-old kid back in the day. So this was actually a really cool little reference guide. It probably doesn't have much uh, use nowadays, uh, just because, again, mainly you have the internet. And there's, there's much better reference books out there. But this one has a special place. You can tell it's a bit beaten up. There's a lot of creases, but it's uh, it's because I got a lot of use out of it as a kid. This one's a lot more recent. This is Doctor Who Adventures in Lockdown. So the past year, there's been a lot of Doctor Who short stories written, as you can see on the left, by people like Chris Chibnall, Paul Cornell, Russell T Davies, Neil Gaiman, Mark Gattis, etc. And it was re it was done for children in need. So it's all all the stories are in here. And what was cool about this is you have a uh, artwork each story for from different artists as well some artists you might recognize if you're in the doctor who community space on places like twitter there's some really great stuff there this one's quite affordable as well you can get it in most uh, places and again all proceeds are going to children in need so it's definitely worth a read this one's quite cool this is terry nation the man who invented the daleks this is basically terry nation's autobiography written by alwyn w turner and it's an actually a really fascinating portrait on Terry Nation's life. Obviously not just the fact he made the Daleks, it goes through all of his life. Because he also created things like Survivors and Blake 7, which sometimes gets overlooked by the fact he invented the Daleks. It's a nice chunky uh, softback. There's a, there's pictures in here as well along the way. I always love that in autobiographies when they're broken up with some pictures. And it's just really good. So if you want to know more about the Welshman who made the Daleks, you should check this out. Another good autobiography read is this, JNT, The Life and Scandalous Times of John Nathan Turner by Richard Marson. Again, if you want a great portrait on uh, John Nathan Turner, then this book is definitely worth the read. I believe this one has pictures in it as well, some pictures I'd never seen of John Nathan Turner before, that's for sure. Good way to break it up as well. And I know we have the documentary on the season 26 set about JNT, but if you want a, a book version of that, or uh, that's probably got even more detail, then definitely check this one out. These next two sort of go hand in hand for me. So you've got the TARDIS handbook and you've got the Dalek handbook. These were released during the Matt Smith era. I think the TARDIS one was 2010. I want to say the Dalek one was 2011, though I could be wrong on that. And these are just great, uh, very informative books about each of their respective subjects. So the TARDIS obviously has a lot of information about the Doctor's titular time machine, which is really cool. And the Dalek handbook has a lot of information about the Daleks. Um, I bought these as a uh, an early teenager. Uh, they're actually pretty informative. They're really good. Good for that sort of age range. Adults might enjoy them as well, but these were great resources for me as a teen looking into the wider universe of Doctor Who, if you like. So, yeah, good purchases. There's a bit more of a recent one. This is Doctor Who, A Brief History of Time Lords. Uh, I got this as a birthday gift and it says, The Great and Good of Gallifrey, the High Council, the Inner Council, the Cardinals of the Academy, the Old Men in Funny Hats, and all are all determined that you should never read this book. Ooh, mysterious. So uh, this is obviously pre-Timeless Children, so that won't be in there. But, you know, it's a neat little book. Here's a good old classic. This is Whoology, Doctor Who, the official 
Miscellany from 2013. I want to say they did a reprint later on. Uh, but, I mean, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It is a miscellany full of facts and information about Doctor Who and even the wider universe as well. Uh, there's probably updated versions of this or versions of a similar book that probably provide more up-to-date information. But back in 2013, the 50th anniversary, when the show was like at the peak of its public profile that year, this was a good read. Here's another good one. This is TARDIS Type 40 Instruction Manual. This was a birthday gift and indeed does have a lot of information again about the TARDIS. In fact, it's probably a more up-to-date version of that TARDIS handbook one I just showed you, so it's nice to keep up to date. This is another birthday gift from this year, actually. This is Doctor Who Exhibitions, The Unofficial and Unauthorised History by Bedwia Gullidge, I think that's how you pronounce it. This was a really interesting book to me, and I haven't read it just yet, but it basically, as it says, documents a history of Doctor Who Exhibitions, so in places like Blackpool, which I went to as a kid, uh, it's by Telos Publishing, who do a lot of great Doctor Who uh, reference books. So uh, I'm really excited to delve into this. And if you're into exhibitions or that sort of angle, then you should definitely inquire about looking into this too. Here's another one I got this year. This is the classic Doctor Who DVD compendium. Now, this actually came out, I think, in 2014. And it's basically, well, it's compiled by Paul Smith. It's basically a tome of information about the Doctor Who DVD releases from the very first one being the Five Doctors in 1999 all the way up until I want to say they included the Web of Fear and the Moonbase, like the 2014 stuff. Um, it's a very, like, you know, informative book, jam-packed with information. It's very much a factual book, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. If you don't want, like, a very factual book, I'd stay away from this one. But after, for some reason, not getting it for seven years, I'm very excited to have this in the collection. And I actually think it might make a good reference book for a future history video about the DVD range. We'll see. Here's a cool one. This is Who Grafica, an infographic guide to space and time. I'd say in some ways this is very um, similar to Whoology, except this is all, all these facts are presented in like a graphic style. I really like this sort of graphic stuff. I don't know, I've always, I always like that section of art in class and stuff and telling facts or information through this style is all what I'm into. So yeah, if you're into that sort of style, a bit more artsy, a bit more quirky, then Who Grafica is definitely one to go to. I'm pretty sure there's a hardback version of this as well, but you can also get it as a paperback. Here's one I'm really proud to own. This is a Script Doctor, the inside story of Doctor Who from 1986 to 1989, written by Andrew Cartmel, who was the script editor for the Seventh Doctor era. A really insightful book about, well, as it says, how how the series was run back then in sort of its last days of the classic era. It's got an introduction by Stephen Moffat, as you can say at the top. And I actually have this, uh, where is it? I actually have this signed by Andrew himself. I met him at a Comic-Con and uh, bought it off him and he signed it. I believe there is a revised version of this that came out. I think it was in limited quantities, though, so uh, you might have to look secondhand. But if, if you can still get it new, definitely do it, especially if you're into, like, the classic series, The Seventh Doctor's Era, how the show initially came to an end. It's a fantastic read. Got another biography. This is Peter Davison. Is there life outside the box? An actor despairs, which is a nice witty take on an actor prepares. This is a great book. Again, obviously, this is written by Peter himself, and it's a really fascinating insight into... Uh, well, his life, I suppose. On the back there, you can see his stamp with his face on it, which I think was around the 50th anniversary. But yeah, if you like Peter Davison, you want to know more about his life career, get this book. Here's a fun one, Doctor Who Time Lord Fairy Tales. This is the hardback edition. It's got a story, I think, with all the Doctors leading up to the 12th. And I believe you can get this in like an individual book format where they've it's all in like a special box and they're all got colored spines and stuff which is really cool but it's nice to own it in some form and this cover's gorgeous as well so yeah fun little read so these next books are some of the most essential books i had as a kid and these were the big guns starting off with this doctor who monsters and villains now i would argue i put a case for this as being one of, if not the most important Doctor Who book ever released. It was released in 2005, just after Series 1. It had some new monster stuff, but most importantly, it had stuff on classic monsters like the Ice Warriors. And in particular, um, it had information about the Cybermen, who at that point in 2005 we'd never seen. So for new fans, this was such, such an important release in getting us interested in the classic stuff. But they didn't just stop there. Oh no, they, they found their formula and they ran with it. So after Monsters and Villains... In 2006, you had uh, Aliens and Enemies with the Cyber Controller on the front. The, the style and the format is the same, although different monsters are covered. It finishes off Series 1 and kicks off Series 2 being covered here as well, which is neat. And no, they didn't stop there. Time for the, the requel now. You've got Doctor Who Creatures and Demons. 
with Martha on the front there. So as you can imagine, same format, same style. It finished series two and uh, covered the first half of series three. So three books, I mean, that's good for any series. Well, guess what, Paisanos? They made a fourth one. Doctor Who, Starships, and Space Stations. You can tell they were really stretching with the titles now. Um, I believe it finished off series three and kick-started series four. And uh, uh, finally, and finally, to round it off, we had this, Companions and Allies. So focusing more on the Companions, which was a nice change of pace from going from the from the monsters of the show. It was really nice. Nice way to round it off, and I think it finished series uh, four. I can't remember if it covered the specials in 2009. I'd have to double check that. I believe there was like a compilation of all of these books jammed together, released called, I think I want to say it was the Ultimate Monster Guide or something like that. Uh, so you could probably get that, but these were great reference books. And as I say, in particular, uh, Monsters and Villains, uh, my case for one of the most important Doctor Who books ever released. Well, that's the first half of the shelf, but I'm noticing we're getting onto the bigger books on the left-hand side here. And there's actually some books out of shot that I forgot that were on a lower shelf. And this video is already getting as, as long as it is. So I think, let's do this. This is going to be part one. We will return for a part two very soon in the near future where we'll cover all the big books on the left side and the books that you currently can't see out of shop. But I hope you have enjoyed the books that we have looked at so far in my Doctor Who collection. But I also want to know, what books do you, yes you, what books do you have in your collection? Have you got some of the same? Have you got some books that I didn't show you today or that you can't see here on this shelf? Let me know in those comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on it. It's very much appreciated. And hit subscribe as well. Join us for regular Doctor Who content coming up. And until part two, or indeed the next video, I shall see you all next time.